The book is best understood as a work of very poorly written fiction. And I also will say that the author is a garbage author of a garbage book. And the tr tragic thing about this book, and there are many things about it that are unfortunate, but the portrayal of the president in the book is so contrary to reality, to the experience of those who work with him, to my own experience having spent the last two years with him. I saw a man who was a political genius. Trump aide Stephen Miller on CNN State of the Union with Jake Tapper this morning, performing for an audience of one. Back with me are Jonathan Capehart, E.J. Dion, Michelle Bernard, and Dana Milbank. Okay, so uh, let's play a little bit of this interview that is rocketing around the Twitters. People are really talking about it. So let's uh, let's uh, listen to this. Is cut three for my producers. A little bit of the Stephen Miller, Jake Tapper experience. Self-made billionaire who revolutionized reality TV and, and who I'm has sure changed the course of our politics. He's watching and he's happy that you said that. But you know, Jake, you can be no, no, you can my, be condescending. I'm and, not being no, condescending. I'm no, trying to get to the point be, that Steve Bannon. You can be condescending. That was a snide remark. You're sure he's watching and he's happy. Let me tell you something. Why is your that network? Snide? You can look. You can be as condescending as you want. It's part of your mo. But listen, the you can have. 24/7. I, I have no idea why you you're attacking have, me. Well, I'll my, explain my, to you. My, my point is. Okay, so he was watching, uh, Dana, he was watching because Trump tweeted at that interview, Jake Tapper of fake news CNN just got destroyed in this interview with Stephen Miller of the Trump administration, watched the hatred and unfairness of this scene and flunk, he got destroyed. That sounds like a, like a regular Twitter, Twitter troll. Isn't it great how the more they deny the book, their, their antics confirm everything in the book? And one of my favorite things denied by Katie Walsh, the former deputy chief of staff, was like, it's like trying to figure out what a child wants. Does he want the ice cream? Or does he want the cookie? <laughs> and what he wanted this morning was in his id for uh, Stephen Miller to go out there and do exactly what he just mm -hmm. did, even if it makes the whole situation worse, because it just felt good for him in this moment. And he's not thinking about what's happening tomorrow or yeah. five right. minutes from now. I want this now. Yeah, he's like a to he's like a toddler. It's like managing a child. All right, let's listen to another uh, bite from it. Uh, here's one more Stephen Miller. This is 25th Amendment kind of stuff. This is. Uh, I mean, did anybody the say the that in the West Wing to yeah. you? All the time. 25th Amendment. They All would the bring time. up the 25th yes. Amendment. Yes, actually, they they would say we're not in in the for sort of in the mid period. We're not at a 25th. Okay, that's not that's not Stephen. That's Michael Wolf. We're going to now play Stephen Miller. Michael Wolf's good too, though. You got a lawsuit on your head. <laughs> you would be going down, landing in descent. There'd be a breaking news development. And in 20 minutes, he would dictate 10 paragraphs of new material to address mm -hmm. that event so, and then deliver flawlessly in front of an audience of 10,000 people. That's worship. Well, I, I, I mean, even if, like, before I even get to, like, what he actually just said, which borders on insanity, his affect. Are you noticing his affect? Yeah. If you couple his affect with the affect of the president and everything the president says and the nonsense Stephen Miller just, you know, jabbered uh, on CNN, I think we have Michael Wolff's argument for the 25th Amendment is absolutely mm -hmm. dead on. I mean, if, if Stephen Miller is the best of the best that this administration has and he can go on CNN, obviously with their permission, no one from the White House goes on any of the Sunday morning shows without the, without the White House's permission. Yeah. We're in a very sorry state and, of affairs. And, and you know, EJ, I think about, when, whenever I think about Donald Trump, it, it's either you think about him being like a child. That's one way to think of it. The other way to think of it is him being sort of Mobutu Sese Seko, right? <laughs> but no one would dare say Mobutu was not the greatest leader that the Congo ever had. No one would dare say he isn't masterful. That when he reads 10 pages of copy, it sounds like Shakespeare. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a way you have to deal with, you know, to be serious, a dictatorial or authoritarian personality that they must be praised, that they must be the best. And he performs that sort of flunky of the dictator role mm -hmm. sort of flawlessly. Right. Well, he married two aspects of how do you serve an autocrat right. in one uh, setting. On the one hand, go after any independent media that might ask questions about you, thus the attack mm -hmm. on Jake Tapper or CNN, and by extension on everybody else right. who questions him, is exactly what an autocratic leader does. And then the second half is exactly as you say, that the autocratic leader demands worship, demands everyone saying how brilliant he is. I mean, soon we are going to learn that Donald Trump is a brilliant cellist. <laughs> and not only what else, 
and has <laughs> written. Yo, yo, Ma, better watch Secret out. works yeah. 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 That, yeah. your rival Proust. I mean, there's something very bizarre about both. One is alarming, and the other is just really yeah. bizarre. He's the Sun King, right? Okay, let's listen to another one. This is cut two for Rye Producers, and this is Miller, uh, Jake Tapper, Tapper, going after the way that Miller is behaving. There's one viewer that you care about right now, and you're being obsequious. No, you're being which, a factotum no, in order being, to please him, okay? No. And I think, you know, I've you know I, I think I've wasted enough of my you viewers' time. I, you know who Thank I you, care Stephen. about? As Republicans, hey, lawmakers call you know for Attorney General about? Jeff Sessions to resign. Jonathan, he, he said you were being obsequious, <laughs> and you were done. Mm -hmm. Done. Uh, good for Jake for doing that. And, you know, to, to um, EJ's point, this sort of worship of President Trump, this whole audience of one. Stephen Miller, people from the administration go on television and they're not talking to the American people. They're not saying things to bolster the democracy, to defend the administration in terms of what it is trying to do in terms of pushing or advancing American ideals at home or abroad. They are talking to the president because they know the president is listening. You read the tweet mm -hmm. that the president tweeted Wasn't out because it was proof. The president was watching Stephen Miller. Think about that. I mean, you, you have the author, authoritarian aspects of this, but you've got people and you've got a president who desperately needs um, praise, needs to be validated by the people who work for him. And all the while, the American people from, from journalists, God, God bless us, mm -hmm. who are s s standing up to that kind, of, that kind of treatment from someone in the administration, and other people who are watching and thinking, what is going on yeah. with the White House, I, with the administration. I bet you he has a guillotine in the West Wing, and that's why they're <laughs> performing like but that. Yeah. Doesn't, <laughs> but that doesn't explain why everybody in the Congress, the Republicans, yes. said, like, that's look right. at those why clips from Camp it? David. It yeah. was, they're all in their matching blue yeah. blazers with the that's open right. collar saying, what a fabulous year we had under this great that's president. Right. You know, <laughs> Orrin Hatch in the South Lawn saying, the greatest president ever. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know they you not care right. about their legacy. Right. Why, I mean, that's what I don't understand. If they are motivated by ego, why, do, why does not one of them care about right. what history that's will right. say about Well, you them. have Paul Ryan saying right. exquisite leadership. You have, and we're watching them there. There is a certain bowing down to Donald Trump, Egypt. There's a certain sort of treating him as the Sun King that, that is a, it's a very good point. It isn't just the people who work for him. It's the people in the co-equal branch of government down the way. It's Congress. It's members of Congress. Can, it, can you explain it? Is it anything that you've seen before in Washington? Well, we've never seen anything like Trump before, so none of this makes any <laughs> yeah. sense. But I think the Republicans on the one side, as you said and others have said earlier, they made a policy bet. He is doing all this deregulation, wrecking Absolutely. regulations to protect workers, the environment, civil rights. That's all traditional Republican stuff. They love that. They support that. They want that to continue. They got the tax cut out of it, which is yeah. what they always want. And, and then there's some the of them are going to personally benefit from financially. Right. Well, a lot of them yeah. will. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, there is still this fear that Trump's base is shrinking, and there's a lot of evidence of that in the polls. But within the Republican Party, he right. still has a substantial majority of Republicans. A lot of these folks have reason to fear a Republican primary, not necessarily from the Bannonites, but from people who support Trump if they go after Trump. So yeah. people like Charlie Dent have left, mm -hmm. people like Jeff Flake. Mm -hmm have left, people yeah. like Corker have left, yeah. uh, because they don't want to face that And I that think primary. what we found out, there are no Bannonites. Bannon thought there were Bannonites, they're right. all no. Trumpists. Right. And to, to EJ's point, in the question that comes to mind listening to EJ is, where are the statesmen? There are none. Where, I mean, you would think in the old yeah. days it was Lindsey Graham and Senator Grassley and those people who were standing there, and yeah. they are willing to throw American democracy as we have known it, as the world has known it, yeah. under the bus for short-term political gain. And it's not only people that, Dana, that he, that he could have power over. When you saw the man who was fourth in line to the White House, mm -hmm. Orrin Hatch, the president pro tem in the Senate, essentially bowing and scraping mm -hmm. at his age, at his level of, of, of achievement and accomplishment, and just in terms of his political longevity, bowing and yeah. scraping before Donald Trump. And he, I don't even, I can't understand and it. And he had no, no reason to, as what it is turns he gonna, out, since yeah, he was retiring. It, 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 it's, it's absolutely baffling. I mean, the best defense I can give for all of this kowtowing is they are afraid for the country that this man actually has that nuclear button he mentioned. It turns out it only orders a Diet Coke. But maybe <laughs> he, may think, he may think it's a yeah. nuclear button uh, uh, all the same time. So they actually are like, let's tiptoe 
around, let's not get him more excited. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's it, a weak book, defense at the, the best. The I book can and right. here's the book again for for Donald Trump. Uh, you know, feel free to tweet at me because I think uh, it, it's turned <laughs> out from Michael Wolff's that it's very effective at helping your yes. you know <laughs> at helping your book sales. When I have another right. book out, I'll let you know, Donald Trump. Uh, but I mean, you know, there, he does describe here a sense of a need to manage him, mm -hmm. a sense of a need to manage his rage, and that if you don't give him praise, if you don't give him love and the things that are that deep, fill that deep hole inside of him, you don't know what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they know what he, they, they, no one knows what he's going to do, but they also at the same time know that they can't control him. Yeah. So the question is, after everything that has happened from his, the sentiments that he expressed after Charlottesville to the complete inaction on what is happening with the uprising in Iran and the fact that we know that all of the people who, you know, they've had 600 people arrested already. Yeah. They're going to start killing people and he is tweeting about absolutely nonsense. And left them on the Muslim. So, so the question is like, how much longer do you stay? Yeah. If you're Jewish, for example, and you hear all the anti-Semitic comments that have come from the president, despite the fact that his daughter and yeah. son-in-law are Jewish, how much longer do you stay? Yeah. Why it's, do you stay in that administration? It's a good question. Where, do, where, where does the patriotism kick in? I don't know. I don't see any heroes coming, I have to be honest with you. Jonathan Capehart and Dana Milbank will be back. E.J. Dion, Michelle Bernard, thank you, friends. This is always fun to hang out with you guys. All right. And coming up, Button Happy Donald takes credit for talks between, seriously, he takes credit for talks between North and South Korea. <laughs> Diplomacy really is his strong suit. Stay with us. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.